Hello! Here is another 3D printed model that I finished using acrylic paints and um, model finishing supplies. Um, this model is by Kai Zhang, and I've linked to the free STL below in the description. Um, it's a little tree stump house, a little fairy house. It's quite cool. Um, this one is not printed full size. I think, I don't know, it's about 70% scale. Um, and I, I really have no clue about the print settings, but I'll ask my husband about that and list it in the description if he can remember what he did. Um, this is quite a cool little model. Um, my favorite thing about it is there's a really big base here, which um, lends itself well to all sorts of customization options. And um, that is why I'll be doing a series of videos about just uh, painting the model. Um, I've got like three more printed and I'll go through step by step of um, how I paint it, um, how I finish it off, and um, hopefully that'll be useful to some people who really want to take their 3D printing to the next level. Anyway, um, just talking about this one now, and um, the first thing I did, it, it actually prints in two parts, so the, the roof is... Um, separate and you glue it on. Um, I prefer to print to um, rather paint things separately before I glue them together. So um, I painted these two bits separate and glued it together only at the very end. But the first thing I had to do was kind of clean them up, clean up any, any um, residual um, filament or, or smooth out any rough edges. And then once, once the print was ready to be painted, I primed it, and you should always prime your prints if you're painting them. Um, you don't have to use any kind of special primer. You can use a spray or you can brush it on. And when I say brush it on, it's just a, um, a thin layer of acrylic paint. Nothing special. Um, nothing that says primer on the package. It's just the first layer of paint. That's all priming is. Giving the next layers of paint something to stick to. And I usually let my, my prints dry for at least a day after I've primed them. That's just my personal preference. Because um, I want to make sure that it's really, really good and dry. So, after it's all primed and ready to go, I kind of blocked my base colors on this particular print. It was dark brown for the tree, gray for the steps, green for the grass, because even though I knew I was going to put all of this static grass on the the base, you always have to provide a base color because the, the color underneath will show through. Um, it's not like a solid carpet, it's, it's fluffy. So um, yeah, I put the green on the bottom there um, and the roof, I think I just did dark brown as kind of a base. Um, then once all those were dry, I put in my washes really applied dark brown wash um, a few times to make sure that I I got right into all these delightful little crevices on the roof. I, I really like this model as well because the the shape of it's just really fun. Plus, um, these grooves are just so nice and deep and they just beg to be painted and they beg to be painted well. So I... I... Um, Applied a few washes there. I, I put applied washes to the tree to get get all these ridges, um, all the little shadows into these ridges, and um, the shadows in here, and a wash across the steps, um, so that you can really see the definition between steps when you go in and highlight afterwards. So after that was all finished and dried. I went in and I did those highlights, which was just another lighter shade of the same color in the case of the the tree. I just highlighted the ridges so that the, the shadows look nice and deep and crevice. The ridges look nice and bright. Um, I highlighted some lighter gray on the step so you can see the distinct little ridges here. Um, and that's just done with highlighting. If you're looking at it from across the room, you can, you can tell it's not just a ramp, you know? Uh, that's the idea. Um, and here on the roof, I highlighted the whole thing with a, a copper color because I really like the um, to add metallics into my prints. I just think it looks really cool and um, it's eye-catching. 
So after all that was done, I, um, also the, the door is highlighted. You can't really see it, but it is. Anyway, after that's all dry, you have to do your details. And the details for this piece are the, the windows, the, um, the little slats, the little crossbars. And there are actually these little delightful, um, hinges on the door which are easy to miss if like um if you don't paint it because it, it kind of gets lost in the ridges of the filament but they are they are there and they're quite cute and there's excuse me there's a there's a little door handle as well and you do the door frame as well and and those are really the only details um that you've got with this one if you see it from the back it's not very exciting there's actually a little bobble there that I never even flicked off. So print is painted more or less finished um, and then it was time to apply the finishing details which is the the modeling flock and fluffy stuff. Um, so I apply this with um, PVA which is just white school glue and um, thicker the better it dries quicker that way. Um, and I, I usually actually use a paintbrush to apply it. If I'm doing a wide area, I'll just brush it on and don't be afraid to get glue in your paintbrush as long as you, as long as you rinse it out right away, it's fine. It doesn't hurt anything. So it, it's a really useful tool, um, to get the glue in there and then you just sprinkle on the stuff. This was, this look was achieved with a layer of nail flocking powder, green nail powder, um, and static grass. So it was applied in two layers and the flocking powder is quite fine, like a, well, it's literally a powder and the, um, the static grass is two millimeter static grass. So it, it stands up and looks like grass. It's really quite cool. Um, and I decided at some, some point that I wasn't going to make it all green. This was painted green. Um, and I just made a path with glue and cork, ground up cork. That's all it is. It's pretty neat. I don't think you can see it very well here, but it gives it that, that sandy stony texture like gravel. And it was quite a light color of brown. So I, I applied a wash, a uh, dark brown wash to it to darken it up and make it look a little bit more worn in. <clears throat> So after that was all finished um, and nice and dry, I was looking at it and I was thinking, you know what, um, it needs something else. So um, I started kind of experimenting with little tiny bits of, I had this green clump foliage that has purple flowers in it and green and purple go really well together. They They just do. And this stuff is... A lot of fun to play with. So I kind of just made vines going up, going up the roof, going up the tree. And um, there's nothing in the back. Well, there's some in the back on the on the roof there. But yeah, um, it just felt like it, it finished off the model. I, I really like making it into vines because it's really meant to be bushes. It comes in quite, quite big lumps that you just kind of stick to models, especially like war games models and things like like they're, you know, yay big and you just kind of decorate it with a bit of ground cover, um, bit of foliage. Um, that's what it's kind of made for, but it works really well on these models. And, um, that's how you take your 3d print to the next level. I mean, this print itself wasn't, wasn't even a great quality print. Um, that was down to our printer. We have a couple of printers and, um, one is better than the other. And this came from the less good, <laughs> the less good, <laughs> the crappier printer, to be honest. And you know what? Most prints are salvageable as long as they're not spaghetti. And I think it came out pretty well. And um, as I said, there will be um, another series of videos on step-by-step -step how to paint something like this, how to paint this specific model. Um, so if you'd like to see that, um, please either check back and see if it's, if it's arrived yet or subscribe. Okay. Bye.